Good morning, dear students. My name is Farhan Mazhar, and the subject today we are studying is Cambridge IGCSE Physics. This is extended physics. Today we have set our hearts to solve a MCQ paper of this subject. For this purpose, we have selected February, March 2024, 2-2 paper. The time allowed for this paper is 45 minutes and there are 40 MCQ questions. The code of this subject is 062522. Today in this video, I am going to present you the solution of these MCQ questions. I will try my best to present you the solution in the written form and I will also try to describe them to the best of my abilities and my knowledge and my skills. So let's start today's paper. So Cambridge IGCSC Physics, February, March, 2024. So let's start. The time allowed is 45 minutes. The G value we will take as 9.8. Total marks are 40. Question number one is on your screen. He says a student has a measuring cylinder containing water and also has a balance. Which of these could she use to find the volume of a small metal sphere? She has no other apparatus. Okay, so if you want to find out the volume of a small metal sphere, we will use the measuring cylinder. We will fill it with water. We will note down the volume. Let's say it's V1. Then we will put the sphere in it once then again note the volume let me say that's v2 from v2 subtract v1 you get the volume of that thing so she needs the measuring cylinder containing the water so i think question number one b is the choice yes sir b is the right choice question number two the diagram shows a solid subject on a flat surface with two forces acting on the object. The diagram shows a solid object on a flat surface with two forces acting on the object. What is the resultant force on the object? You see these two forces, their line of action is same. Um, but this four Newton force is acting to the right. This three Newton force is acting to the left. So out of this, three will be balanced, cancel. So the resultant force will be uh, one Newton force to the left. Uh, to the left, no, 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 no. To the right, sorry, I said left. One Newton to the right. So I think question number two, B is the choice. Question number three. A ball is falling towards the ground. Which transfer between energy stores is taking place? So see, when you are at a certain height and you are coming down, so here you have gravitational potential energy. As you come down, your gravitational potential energy converts into the kinetic energy. So I think uh, which transfer between energy uh, stores is taking place? The gravitational potential energy is converting into the kinetic energy okay so i think c is the right choice sir. so c is the right choice question number four which row contains one scalar quantity and one vector quantity okay one scalar and one vector energy is a scalar and velocity is a vector. So very first is the right answer. Mass and time both are scalar, momentum and weight both are vectors. 
distance and temperature both are scalar. So A is the option, sir. Question number four, A is the option. Yeah. Okay. This is question number uh, five. He says the table gives data about four liquids, W, X, Y, and Z. The liquid W, its mass is 10 gram, volume is 10 centimeter cube. X, its mass is 20 gram, and the volume is 15 centimeter cube. Y, liquid, its mass is 30 gram, and its volume is 50 centimeter cube. The Z, its mass is 40 gram, and its volume is 50 centimeter cube. None of the liquid mixes with any of the other liquid. All the liquids are put in the same container and settled to form four separate layers. Which statement is correct? You see, they all have different uh, densities. So when you mix them together, when you put them in the same container, so they will do, they do not mix with each other. So what will happen according to their density, they will make layers. So the material with the highest density, the liquid with the highest density, that will be at the bottom. And the liquid with the lowest density, that will be at the top of that container, uh, in that container, I mean. So let me show you, I have done this calculation. Okay, so on your screen, I hope you can see the question number five. I will try to find out density of each liquid. So for W, the density will be mass divided by volume, 10 gram divided by 10 centimeter cube. So it will be one gram per centimeter cube. And for X, the density will be 20 gram divided by 15 centimeter cube. It will be 1.33 grams per centimeter cube. For Y, the density will be 30 gram divided by 50 centimeter cube. And the answer will be 0 0.6 grams per centimeter cube. For Z, the density will be 40 grams divided by 50 centimeter cube, and that will be 0 0.8 grams per centimeter cube. So uh, what will happen now, uh, when you put them in a container because they do not mix with each other, so according to the, 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 high, the, the most denser liquid will be at the bottom. The most denser liquid here is X, that will be at the bottom, then W, that is one gram per centimeter cube density, then it will be, and then we will have Z and then we will have Y. So the order is Y, Z, W, X. So now we have to choose which answer is. Z forms the layer below the Y. Let's check. He says Z forms the layer below the Y. Oh yeah, that is the right statement, sir. Z forms the layer. This is a right statement. I just checked the first one, the D one. W forms a layer below X. Is the W below X? No, that's wrong. A is not right. Uh, B, X forms the top layer. Let's check. No, X is at the bottom. Y forms the bottom layer. Y is at the top. It's not at the bottom. Only the D is the right statement. So question number five, D is the answer. Yes, sir. D is the right answer, sir. Okay, he says, uh, question number six, he says, a weightless beam is balanced on a pivot as shown. The forces P, Q, and R act on the beam. Which equation is correct? You see, this is, this P is trying to produce anti-clockwise. Uh, this is anti-clockwise. More uh, talk, or you can say moment. The Q is trying to produce a clockwise uh, moment, and this R is also trying to produce a clockwise moment about the pivot. So, according to the law of the conservation of the moment, you see the principle of moments. Uh, the because this is in equilibrium. So the anti-clockwise moment is equal to the sum of the clockwise moments. The sum of anti-clockwise moments is equal to the uh, sum of clockwise uh, moments. So uh, the P multiply D is equal to Q multiply B plus R multiply A. A is, A is the moment arm for this. B is the moment arm for this. D is the moment arm for this. 
So uh, let me show you. Okay, so question number six is showing up on your screen. So P multiplied D is equals to Q multiplied B plus R multiplied A. And if you take this thing to the other side, it will be P multiplied D minus Q multiplied B is equals to R multiplied A. And you can see this is the answer. Let's see again. See? So this is the D option. None of none other is right. Okay, none of the others is a right thing, right answer or statement. So D is the right answer. So question number six, D is the option. Okay, so we are going on the question number seven. He says, an object is moving at three meter per second. A force acts on the object. After a time, the object is moving at minus 4.0 meter per second. This negative means the direction of the velocity has changed. The mass of the object is 5 kg. What is the change in the momentum of the body? You see, the momentum is the product of the mass and the velocity. The change in the momentum is final momentum minus the initial momentum. So the change in the momentum will be equal to mv minus mu. So the final velocity is minus 4. The initial velocity is positive 3. The mass is 5 kg. So it will be 5 multiplied with the minus 4, minus 5 multiplied 3, minus 20, minus 15, that's minus 35 kg meter per second. Minus 35 kg meter per second. So I think question number 7, A is the answer. Let's check question number 7, A is the right answer, sir. Okay, so we are on the question number 8. In the question number eight, he says, the diagram shows a column of liquid, the pressure due to the liquid at the bottom of the liquid is 6,000 Newton per meter square. The height, the depth of the liquid above the point of observation is 50 centimeter. What is the density of the liquid? You know, the pressure due to the liquid, the formula is rho g h. Rho means the density, and G means the gravitational field strength at that point, and uh, H means the depth of the liquid. So very easily we can find the density of that liquid here. We know the pressure of the liquid. Okay, so P is equal to rho G H. The P is 6,000, and the rho is question. Rho means density, and the G value is 9.8, and the H value is 0.5. So the rho will be equals to 6,000 divided by 9.8 divided by 0 0.5. And the answer will be 1,224.5 kg per meter cube. So when you round it off, it is 1,200 kg per meter cube. 1,200 kg per meter cube. Do we have that answer there? Yes, sir. It's the B option, sir. So question number eight, B is the option. So I think this answer is right so <clears throat> the next question coming up on your screen is question number uh, nine and they say so question number nine he says uh, which statement correctly describes uh, a change of state a gas condenses to form a liquid. That is true. When the gas condenses, it forms a liquid. And that's the state change. So this statement is right. A liquid melts to form a solid. This statement is wrong. When liquid melts, it do not form a solid. A solid condenses to form a liquid. No. The gas condenses to form a liquid. A solid boils to form a gas. No. A liquid boils to form a gas. So A is the option, sir. The only right sentence is A. Question number nine, A is the option. Okay, so here we have question number 10. Okay, in the question number 10, it says the diagram shows a pan used for cooking food. So here we have the base of the pan and this is the handle of the pan. Which row is correct for the materials used to make the base of the pan and the handle of the pan. 
You see, the base of the pan should be a very conduct good conductor of the heat, and the handle of the pan should be an insulator or it should be a bad conductor of the heat. Okay. So, base of the pan, it should be a good thermal conductor. Yeah. It's A or B choice. And the handle of the pan, it should be a poor thermal conductor. So, I think B is the right answer, sir. Question number 10, I think B is the right answer, sir. Yeah, that is right. Okay, then we have here question number 11 on your screen. He says, uh, solar heating panels consist of pipes carrying water that absorb radiation from the sun. Which texture and color is the surface of the pipes so that the temperature of the water rises at the quickest rate. So uh, we will be, the surface should be of the black color because bad black and it should be dull because the dull black will be a very good absorber of the infrared rays. So it should be dull black, I think. So question number 11, I think uh, A is the choice, sir. Yes, that is very simple. The dull black is the best and uh, absorber of the infrared rays. Question number 12. He says, when pollen grains in the water are viewed through a microscope, they are seen to be in continuous rapid random motion. What causes a pollen grain to move in this way? You see, the pollen grain is bombarded with the molecules of the water from all the sides because the water molecules are moving randomly. So they collide with the pollen grains and the pollen grains perform the random motion. So this is, uh, I think, uh, uh, what causes the pollen grain to move in this way? Convection currents in the water. And... Uh, so, convection currents in the water, no bombardment by a single molecule of water, no uneven bombardment of the different sides, on different sides by the water molecules, and collision with another pollen grain? Yes, C is the right option, sir. Question number 12, I think C is the right option. That's the right option, sir. So, that was question number uh, 12. So we are going to the next question. The next question is question number 13, showing up on your screen. A circular flat bottomed dish contained 100 cubic centimeter of water. Students are asked how to increase the rate at which the water evaporates. So they want to increase the rate of evaporation. The suggestions are listed below. Pour the water into a flat bottom dish of larger diameter. That is true. When the surface, because this will make the surface area larger. So when the surface area of the liquid will become larger, because the diameter becomes larger, the rate of evaporation will increase. Student two, cool the dish and water. No. When you decrease the temperature of the liquid, the rate of evaporation will decrease. They want to increase the rate of evaporation. Student three, create a current of air over the dish with a fan. Yes. When the wind is blowing, you have a current over the that liquid, the rate of evaporation increases. So student one and three, they are correct. Suggest which suggestions will increase the rate of evaporation? One and three only. I think uh, C is the option. Question number 13, sir, C is the right option. Question number 14, matter consists of very small particles in a continuum. So, sorry for the internet. There's something happened with the internet. So, we were on question number uh, 14. And that question is showing up here. Matter consists of uh, very small particles in a continual state of motion. Which road describes the behavior of the particles in a liquid? 
The forces between the particles is strong. Move randomly at high speed. This word high speed is not good. As the forces between the particles in the liquid is strong. They vibrate, but change position. That can be the answer. The forces between the particles is uh, weak. No. Vibrate in fixed position. No, this does not happen in the liquid. D, the forces between the particles is weak and move randomly at high speed. This high speed word is little. So I think B is the option, sir. Question number 14, B is the right option. Okay, so we are going to the next question. Here we have question number 15. The diagram shows the equipment used in an experiment on heating of aluminum. The table gives the results for the uh, experiment. So here you have a heater. So this is a block of aluminum. And here we have drilled a hole in it, another hole in it. In this hole, we have put a heater. The heater is attached with a voltmeter and ammeter. Ammeter will tell you how much current is there. And the voltmeter will tell you how much is the voltage there. And here we have inserted a thermometer, which tells you what is the temperature of the aluminum. So uh, he says the table gives the results for the experiment. The mass of the block is 0 0.80 kg. The voltmeter reading is 12 volt. The ammeter reading is 5 ampere. And the time is 300 seconds. The specific heat capacity of the aluminum is 900 joules per kg per degree centigrade. What is the maximum possible temperature rise in the, in the, you know, in the block? So this is their question. So let me show you the solution of this. I have done this. Okay. So we know the, 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 the reading on the ammeter. We know the voltmeter reading. We know the time that is in seconds. So just multiply. Heat is equals to IVT. That's the heat provided by the heater. So 5 multiplied 12 multiplied 300. So that is 18,000 joules. So this much heat is being provided by the heater. So heat is equals to MC delta theta. So we know that heat provided is 18,000 joules and the mass is 0 0.80 kg and the specific heat capacity is 900 and delta theta is the question. So delta theta will be equal to 18,000 divided by 7200, uh, 720 sorry. So that will be 25 degrees. So the change in the temperature is 25 degrees. So that option do we have here? Yes sir. This is the C option. So question number 15, C is the option, which is the right option, sir. So we are going to the next part. Here we have question number 16. He says the diagram shows a wave. The diagram shows a wave. Uh, here we have a displacement uh, from disturbed position. And this is the position along the wave. Which dimension describes the properties of, you see, uh, R is the amplitude and from this position to this position. So the Q is the wavelength. So let's see what are the right, do we have these options here? Yeah, so R is the amplitude. Amplitude means from the mean position, how low you go from the mean position, how high you go means. And the wavelength is the distance between the two consecutive points who are in the same phase. So I think Q is the wavelength and R is the amplitude. So question number 16, C is the right answer, sir. Question number 16, C is the right answer. So that was question 16. Now we are going to the next question. That is question number 17. It says, which road describes some characteristics of an image formed in a plane mirror. You see, the image formed in a plane mirror is virtual. It is uh, at the same distance from the mirror as the object's distance is from the mirror. Its size is same as the size of the object. And so it's virtual and the same size as the object. I think D is the right option, sir. 
question number 17 d is the right option okay <clears throat> Uh, question number 18. The range of audible frequencies for the elephant is 10 hertz to 12,000 hertz. And for horses, it is 55 hertz to 33,000 hertz. Which statement about the range of audible frequencies for a healthy human ear is correct? For a healthy human ear, the range is from... 20 to 20. Okay. So this is the range for a healthy human ear, 20 to 20,000. You see, uh, the for the elephant, uh, the, for the elephant, let me change the color. Elephants frequencies are from 10 to 12,000. Okay. So some sounds of the elephants we will be able to hear. And the some sounds which elephant produce, for example, this, this sound. We cannot hear because this is uh, infrasound uh, from the its frequencies less than the audible frequency range of the healthy human. Uh, for the horses, the for the horses, you see uh, what happens here. The horses fifty five, so the fifty five will be here somewhere. Okay, suppose it's here. Up to 33,000. Okay. So, my dear students, you see some sounds produced by the horses you will be able to hear, and some sounds you will not be able to hear. So, the human ear cannot hear all the sounds heard by the elephants, nor those heard by the horses. I think D is the right option. Sir. Question number 18, D is the right option. So we have question number 19 here. Okay. He says an object is placed in front of a plane mirror. The ray diagram shows the reflection of one ray of light from the object by the mirror. Where does the mirror form an image of the object? Okay. So if you prolong this and you prolong the reflected ray, the image will be formed here. So this is the right answer, sir. The method is very simple. You see, you 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 prolong this line. Okay. You prolong this line behind this reflected line. So where they intersect. There the image is formed. Okay. So I think A is the right option, sir. Question number 19, A is the right option. So here we have the next question. The next question is question number 20 coming up on your screen. He says the light refracts as it enters glass from air, as shown. Which expression is equal to the refractive index of the glass? You see. This is not the angle of incidence. This is the angle of incidence, sir. And this will be 90 minus theta 1. Okay. So this is 90 minus theta 1. So uh, the refractive index is represented with the N. And that is equals to the sine of the angle of incidence divided by the sine of angle of refraction. So this is your angle of incidence, and this is the angle of refraction. So it will be sine i by sine r. 
So I is 90 minus theta 1 and the R is theta 2. So the right answer will be this one. N is equal to sine I by sine R. Okay. So hopefully the C is the answer, sir. Question number 20, C is the right answer. Okay. We are going to the next part. He says... Here we have the next part. Light traveling at a speed of 3 x 8 meter per second strikes the surface of a glass block and undergoes refraction as it enters the block. The diagram shows a ray of this light before and after it enters the block. What is the speed of light in the glass? You see, uh, the refractive index of a glass block is, there are two formulae for that. One is sine I by sine R. The other formula is the speed of the light in the air divided by the speed of light in that medium. Okay. So let me show you. From there, I can calculate, actually calculate, the speed of the light in this medium. So this is question number 21 showing up on the screen. So the refractive index is equal to sine I by sine R. And that, another formula for the refractive index is the speed of the light in the air and the speed of the light in the glass. So sine 55 divided by sine 33. And that will be equals to uh, the speed of the light in the air is 3 x for 8 a meter per second. And the speed in the glass is question. So speed in the glass will be equals to uh, 3 x 8 multiplied by sine 33 divided by sine 55. You enter these values in your calculator and you get the answer. So uh, it will be 1.995 x 8 meter per second, which is when you round it off, it is approximately 2 x 8 meter per second. So the speed of the light in that glass will be 2 x 8 meter per second. Uh, 2 x 8 meter per second, that's the B choice, sir. And so that means the, that means question number 21, B is the choice, sir. Question number 21, B is the right choice. Okay. So next question number 22 is on your screen. It says, which row about converging lenses and diverging lenses is correct? Converging lenses always produce inverted images. No, when the uh, converging lens makes a virtual image, the image formed is erect, it's upright. So the first one is wrong. Can be used as a magnifying glass. That's true. The converging lenses can be used as a magnifying glass. They say do not have a principal focus. The diverging lenses do not have principal focus. This, this sentence is wrong. C option is can be used to correct short sightedness. No, the converging lens is used to correct the long sightedness. So C is wrong. And these can produce real and virtual images. That's true. Converging lens, depending upon the location of the object with respect to the lens, the image formed can be real, the image formed can be virtual. For example, when you use it as a magnifying glass, the image formed is virtual. And when you use the lens for magnifying glass or uh, sorry, uh, photo enlarger or for projector or for in the camera, uh, the image form is real. And he says the averaging lens can be used to correct short sightedness. That is true, sir. These are the facts and you should know that. So D is the option, sir. Uh, question number 22, D is the option. That's true. That's right. Easy peasy. Okay, we are going to the next question, and the next question is question number 23. He says, a charged rod X is placed on a balance, and another rod Y is brought close to it, as shown. Uh, so which combination of the charges could, would, could cause the change in the balance? You see, when you put this charged rod X, the reading is 45.3 gram. And when you bring this charge rod Y close to it, the reading has increased. This means that it is repelling it. So how this is possible? How come the Y and the X can repel each other without touching? That is only possible when X and Y rod both have the same charge on them. 
negative charge, negative charge, yes. If the charge is same on both the rods, then it's possible. So I think A is the option because they have the same charge, so it's pushing it downward. So I think uh, question number 23A is the right option, sir. Question number 24, he says, what is the unit of the potential difference? You see the unit for the potential difference is volt, another unit for the potential difference is joules per coulomb. So, but the right unit here given is D option, volt. Question number 24, D is the right option, sir. We have question number 25 on the, your screen. They are showing a transformer. It looks like a step-down transformer. How do I know it's a step-down transformer? Because the number of turns on the primary side are 550 turns. Number of turns on the secondary coil are only 115 turns. So he says the diagram shows a transformer. What is the output voltage? You know, uh, uh, input voltage is given 22,000 volt. The turns on the primary coil are also given. That are 550 turns. The turns on the secondary coil are 115. The the voltage in the secondary coil is question. Very simple, famous equation for the transformer is Vs by Vp is equal to Ns by Np. You see, the uh, if you put S, Vs upside, Ns will be also upside. If you put Vp upside here on the left side, then the Np will be on the upside on the right side. Okay, so Vs by Vp is equal to Ns by Np. Vs is question. VP, the voltage in the primary is 22,000 volts. The turns on the secondary is 115, and the turns in the primary are 550. So the Vs will be equal to 115 multiplied 22,000 divided by uh, 550 equals to, and that will be 4,600 volt. 4,600 volt. 4,600 volt. So I think C is the option, sir. Question number 25C is the right option, sir. We are on the question number 26. He says, uh, the diagram shows two arrangements of a pair of identical bar magnets. Three points, P, Q, and R are shown. At which point is the magnetic field due to magnets weakest and, which, and at which point is its strongest? You see, here in this diagram, the north and the north are facing each other. From this north, the magnetic lines come out. From this north also, the magnetic lines are coming out. So these magnetic lines, their rule is that they do not intersect each other. So what happens? They try to avoid each other. So they will go like this. The magnetic lines will go like this. And the magnetic lines will go like this. And the magnetic lines which are coming from here, they will also go like this. They are trying to avoid each other. They do not intersect each other. So here, we will have a point where there will be no magnetic line. So the weakest magnetic field will be here because there will be no magnetic lines there. So the weakest magnetic field is at the point P. Here we have a north and we have a south. So from this north, the magnetic lines will be going to this south from here. From this north also, the magnetic lines are coming here. So the strongest magnetic field will be here because here there will be a lot of magnetic lines entering into the south pole. And because the magnetic lines will be very, 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 very close to each other, so the magnetic field will be very strong at the point R. So the strongest magnetic field will be at the point R because there, there will be a lot of magnetic lines and they will be very close to each other. And the weakest magnetic field will be at the point P. So I think... Uh, B is the choice, sir. Question number 26, B is the choice, sir. That is the right choice, sir. Question number 26, B is the right choice, sir. So we have question number, then we have question number 27. He says a nichrome wire P has a length of one meter and a diameter of one millimeter. A second nichrome wire Q has a length of two meter and a diameter of two millimeter. Which statement correctly compares the resistance of the Q with that of the P? The resistance of the Q is one quarter. Let me, let me calculate this. I have done this calculation properly. We have done this calculation. So here we go. 
because uh, you know the, both the wires they are made of the same material so both of them their resistivity will be same same so the resistivity of the p and the resistivity of the q they are same the formula for the resist resistivity is r multiply a divided by l so you know the area of the wire that is pi r squared so we will find the radius and that radius is in millimeters i will convert it into meters and then I will take a square. So uh, pi 0 0.005 square into 0 0.001 square. So, and this length is two meter, its length is one meter. Pi and pi will be canceled. So when you do this calculation, the RP will be equal to two times the RQ. So that means RQ is half, when you take this two to the other side, half of the RP. The resistance of the Q is half the resistance of the P. The resistance is of the Q is half the resistance of the P. So B is the choice. Question number 27, B is the right choice. Question number 28, a student has two resistors. One resistor has a resistance of two ohm and the other has a resistance of 40 kilo ohm. Which statement is correct? When connected in parallel, when connected in series. Okay. Combined resistance we want to find out. So, okay. So, let me show you. Okay. So, here we have. So, the R1, the R1 here is 2 ohm. The R2 is 40,000 ohm. So, if you connect them in series with each other, so the equivalent resistance will be R1 plus the R2. So, that will be 2 plus 40,000. So that will be 40,002 ohm. So if you connect them in parallel to each other, so what will happen? 1 by R will be equal to 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2. So that will be 1 by R will be equal to 1 by 2 plus 1 by 40,000. So when you do this calculation, the final answer R will be 1.9999999 ohm. So that is 2 ohm. So do we have that option? When you connect them in parallel, the combined resistance is 2 ohm. So I think B is the choice. Uh, question number 28, B is the right choice. Then we have question number 29 on your screen. In which circuit do both lamps light? You see here, the conventional current will come from here. And this diode is backward biased. So this diode will not let the current flow through it. So these lamps will not lit. So here you see, uh, the current is coming from here, 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 here. So you can see here, this diode is backward biased for the conventional current. So it will not let flow the, let the current flow. So what will happen? There will be no lights. Here, the current is coming from here. So this diode is good. This is forward biased and it will let the current flow through it. So this lamp will lit. This lamp will automatically lit because there are no op optical in its path. So yeah, here both the lamps will be on. Here, the current is coming from this. So this lamp will be on. But for this lamp, the you see, the conventional current has become, uh, the diode with respect to the conventional current is backward biased. So the diode will not let the current flow through it. So this second lamp will not let. Only the first one will let. They ask us that where both the lamps let. So that is the C option, sir. I hope you understand how this is done. This is question number 29 is C is the right option, sir. We are doing February, March, 2024 paper. So then we have question number 30. An isotope of strontium has the nucleide notation, uh, 3884. How many protons and neutrons are there in a nucleus? The, you see the internet is taking breaths. <laughs> it's, it's getting tired. Okay. So we were on the question number 30. They were asking us how many uh, protons are there, how many uh, neutrons are there in the strontium.
So 84 minus 38, I'm not sure I have done this on a paper or not. Yeah. No, I have not done it on the paper. So simply subtract them. From 84, if you subtract uh, 38, it will be, I think, 6, 46, okay? So the number of the neutrons are 46. I think A is the option, sir. Question number 30A looks the right option to me, sir. I hope you understand how this is being done. Okay, now we are going to the next question. That next question is question number 31. It says, a student is investigating the count rate of a radioactive substance. How, how must he adjust his reading for the background count? You see, whatever the readings comes on your machine, for example, GMQ, and whatever is the reading, from that reading, subtract the background count, and then you will get the the reading of the radiation purely dependent on the source or the sample. Subtract the count rate from the reading. Yes, this is the rule. Question number 31, C is the right option. You see, whatever is the reading coming on your machine, from that reading, you are supposed to subtract the background. And the remaining reading will be actually the reading due to your sample. So that is question number 31. Question number 32, what occurs during nuclear fusion? Two light atomic nuclei join together and emit energy. Two light atomic nuclei join together and absorb energy. A uh, heavy atomic nucleus splits and emits energy. A uh, heavy atomic nucleus splits and... You see, in the nuclear fusion, smaller light nuclei, they come join together and they emit a lot of, lot of, lot of energy. So I think uh, A is the right answer, sir. Question number 32, A is the right answer. The paper we are doing is February, March 2024 of the Cambridge IGCSC paper. Okay, question number 14 is coming up on your screen. He says, uh, uh, the a beta particles enter a uniform magnetic field directed into the page and deflect downwards as shown. So the beta particles are deflecting towards the bottom of the page. The direction of the electric field would also deflect an electron downward. So uh, if you want the in the electric field, you want the magnetic field and the beta particles to be deflected towards the bottom of the page, you know, beta particles are negative and the negative charges always move opposite to the direction of the electric field. The negative charges always move opposite to the direction of the electric field. Beta particle is negative, it's electron. So if you want the beta particles, the negative particles to bend towards the bottom of the page, the direction of the electric field must be towards the top of the page, up the page. What will, but which direction of the electric field would also deflect? So the magnetic, sorry, electric field must be up the up the page. Its direction should be towards the top of the page. Then the because the beta particles are negative, they are electrons, so they will bend in the downward direction because the negative charges move opposite to the direction of the electric field. So I think beta D is the answer. Question number 32. D is the right answer, sir. Question number uh, 34 is coming up on your screen. And it says, the radioactive isotope radon, which is 86222, is an alpha emitter. It gives out alpha particles. During this uh, radioactive decay, an isotope of polonium is produced. How many neutrons does the nucleus of this isotope of the polonium Contains this is question number 34. Let me show you. Okay, now you can see here uh, when the when this uh, radon undergoes an alpha decay. So, what will happen? Uh, alpha is 2 4. So, polonium will have its uh, when the alpha, alpha decay happens, the dotted nucleus 
the uh, what happens in the dotted nucleus the proton number decreases by two and the mass number decreases by four so the polonium's mass number will become 218 and this uh, proton number will be 84 so the number of the neutrons will be the nucleon number minus the proton number so that will be 218 minus 84 and that is 134 134 134 c looks the right option to me sir question number 34 c is the option okay so one thing remember whenever an alpha particle is given out in the daughter nucleus as compared to the uh, parent nucleus the proton number decreases by two and the nucleon number decreases by four from the nucleon number if you subtract the proton number you get the number of neutrons in the nucleus. That's question number 34. I hope you understand. Then we have question number 35. So here we have question number 35 on your screen. And it says, okay, question number 35. He says, which statement gives two safety precautions to take when a person is working with the ionizing radiation? You see, ionizing radiation, the most ionizing thing is alpha particles but and, uh, and the beta particles. The most ionizing is alpha and then we have beta. So, decrease the exposure time. Yes, that is true. The exposure time should be maximum, uh, the minimum, sorry and decrease the distance between the person and the source. No, don't decrease the distance between the person and the source. Increase the distance between the person. And... So decrease the exposure time. This is the best statement, sir. Decrease the exposure time and increase the distance between the person and the source. Yes, that's the safety precaution. I think uh, increase the exposure time is wrong statement, sir. So B looks the right option, sir. Question number 35, B is the right option, sir. Here we have, he says, which list correctly shows the planets in decreasing order of the distance from the sun? Okay, so they are talking about basically Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune, Uranus. Okay, so let's see. Decreasing order of distance. Okay, so... Uh, you see, this is the, my very educated mother just served as nachos. So this is Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. So they are talking about these. So the option is J, S, U, N. Uh, so they're, they are saying in decreasing order of the distance from the sun. Okay. So first one... Um, that should come, I think, which whose distance is the is the largest. And th the meaning of this, this wording is the largest distance, then the second largest, then the third largest, and then the smallest distance. Okay? This is what they are asking. So according to that, it will be... Uh, so they are basically using how many? Uranus. Let me see. That's not right. Which list correctly shows the planets in decreasing order of the distance? Okay, so sorry for the internet. The, the internet is... It's very hot in Sokota today, so I think the temperature most probably right now is, I don't know how much is the temperature in Sokota. Uh, the temperature is not showing up here. It's going up to 47, 48 degrees Celsius. So it's very hot in Sokota today. So which list correctly shows the planets in decreasing order of distance? The... The longest distance is of Neptune, then Uranus, then Saturn, then Jupiter. You can see at this left, Neptune, Uranus, Saturn, Jupiter. You need to understand this sentence. So I think C is the right option. So, 
क्वेश्चन नंबर थर्टी सिक्स सी इज द राइट ऑप्शन सर so once again we were interrupted by the internet see so we are on let me show you the previous question uh we were on this question and i showed you this list for question number 36 to help you out so basically they were asking you this order they wanted you to write them in this order okay so neptune uranus saturn jupiter okay so 36 c was the option now we are going on the question number 37 he says the sun radiates most of its energy in three regions of the electromagnetic spectrum in the pie chart region 1 is infrared radiation region 2 is visible radiation and the region number 3 is ultraviolet this is very famous fact about the the energy coming from the uh, electromagnetic waves coming from the sun they are infrared radiation they are visible light and ultraviolet okay so remember these names so this is a very famous fact which is frequently asked in the paper So question number thirty seven, we say C is the option. So question number thirty seven, C is the right option. Then we have the question number thirty eight coming up on your screen. He says, "Uh, this is question number thirty eight." He says that the diagram shows a comet moving in an elliptical orbit around the sun. At which position is the comet moving with the greatest speed? You see. the greatest speed is when your kinetic energy is maximum the planet's kinetic energy is maximum when it is nearest to the sun so here the kinetic energy or the v will be uh, maximum okay and remember this thing this is frequently tested uh, argument uh, fact sorry and when it will be at this position its uh, gravitational potential energy its potential energy uh, will be uh, maximum okay and if this at this point this will be maximum and uh, here the kinetic energy is maximum so this concept is tested again and again here the kinetic energy is maximum so it means the speed is maximum at the point a that's a fact question number 38 Let's check. Question number thirty-eight A is the right option, sir. So let's move to the next part. That is question number thirty-nine. He says nuclear reactions in the sun release large quantities of energy. Which statement about this process is correct? It uh, the the process which is happening on the sun is fusion of the helium to produce uh, helium. it involves the fusion of hydrogen yeah. to produce helium and it produces uh, the fusion of the hydrogen is taking place and it produces helium so i think question number 39 d is the right option sir question number 39 d is the right option so let's move to the next question the next question on your screen is question number 40 in the question number 40 the table gives data about four planets in our solar system so he says the mean surface temperature of the uranus is minus 195 the earth's mean temperature is 15 and the planet x is mean temperature is minus 165 minus 65 and the planet y is minus 140 what are the planets x and y so the planet x and you know uh, we don't know uh, but if you look at the let me show you uh, i have that here so here we have uh, the order of these planets we have mars venus earth mars jupiter and saturn and uh, See. 
So here you can see that I have question number 40. We have shown here a list of the planets, uh, Mars, Venus, Earth, Jima, uh, sorry, this is not Mars, this is Mercury. This is Mercury. Sorry, I made a mistake. Okay, so Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. So this is the this Mercury is nearest to the Sun, then Venus, then Earth, then Mars, then Jupiter, then Saturn, then Uranus, then Neptune. So he gave us that the temperature of the Earth is 15, and the temperature of the Uranus is minus 195. You see. Then he gave us uh, the the name of X and Y. And the planet which will be nearest to the sun will have higher temperature. The planet which is away from the sun will have the lowest temperature. So Mars will have minus 65 and the Saturn will have minus 140. So they think that the X can be Mars because why it can be Mars? Because it is relatively nearer to the sun as compared to the Saturn. So it, its temperature can be minus 65 and minus 140. In the question, he's talking about Mars, Saturn, Mars, and Neptune. So I think uh, Mars and Saturn is the right option, sir. Mars and Saturn is the right option. So, so we will have A option. This is question number 40. It's A option. So then we will see. So, my dear students, we are done with this paper. So, if you find this video useful, if you find this video interesting, uh, please share the link of this video with your class fellows, with your teachers, with your junior students. Also, like this video and uh, Share the link of this video on your WhatsApp groups, in your Facebook, on your Instagram, in your Twitter account, wherever is possible. Because when you do this, this helps me to promote my channel and this helps me to support my work. So thank you very much for watching this video and have a good day. And uh, one thing very important that if I made some mistake, I'm sorry for that, this is possible that I can make a mistake, but we'll try to uh, work error free. So, but anyway, uh, have a good day. God bless you all.